Hey guys, it's me, Miss Allison, coming to you from my kitchen, which means we've got a wonderful cooking demonstration coming up. And in today's video, we are going to be making oven-baked caramel corn, okay? So we're gonna go through all the steps, but I did wanna first thank you all for watching all of our videos and uh, keeping up with us, and we'll be continuing to make more videos for you. So make sure to stay tuned. But our first step is gonna be to preheat our oven right here to 250 degrees, and we're gonna be making, obviously, popcorn, and I'm gonna be using our family's um, air popper, which I have set up right here behind me. And it's gonna take it a few minutes to make it all, but we are gonna be popping one um, cup of popcorn. So let me go ahead and do that, and I'll be right back with you guys. Okay guys, so all the popcorn has been finished popping. And just to give you an idea how much popcorn this actually makes out of one cup, these are very large mixing bowls and it's almost filled both of them up. So be ready for that. If you want your recipe to be smaller than that, just do a half recipe. Um, but the next thing you're gonna need to do, as you can see, I have my um, oven preheated to 250 degrees. I've got two baking sheets here and I've gone ahead and just put some aluminum foil down. It just makes cleanup a little bit easier. But all you're gonna have to do right now is get your popcorn onto these pans. And this is just to keep it warm, as well as to keep it nice and crispy for the rest of this recipe. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and get that done. And we're gonna pop them in the oven. Like I said, this is just at 250 degrees. Nothing really hot. And then we're gonna get started on the next part of this recipe. Now you will need for this a candy thermometer. Um, it's the easiest way to do it if you don't know how to tell the different stages of when um, sugar has reached a certain temperature. So what we're looking for here is for our sugar mixture to reach 248 degrees. Okay, and like I said, it does say to use a candy thermometer. This is mine that I use. And you can see it goes up much higher than a standard thermometer does. Okay, so for this next part, all you have to do is add in to your saucepan here. I've got two cups of light brown sugar, one and two, and those are firmly packed. We also are gonna need two sticks of butter that is equal to um, one cup of butter. And the recipe does call for unsalted butter. I don't have any on me right now, so I'm gonna go ahead and use some salted butter and just use less salt added into the recipe, okay? So for this, you're just gonna turn it on. Now you are gonna wait for it to reach a boil. And like I said, we are gonna wait for 248 degrees using our candy thermometer. So this is gonna take just a few minutes. And once it's ready, we'll go ahead and continue from there. I forgot to add in my corn syrup, so I wanted to go ahead and make sure I add that in before it starts to melt. And this is half a cup of light corn syrup. All right, guys, we'll catch up in a few minutes. As your sugar mixture starts to melt, go ahead and give it a little stir every once in a while. You just wanna make sure that you're getting that sugar dissolved and getting the butter mixed in and incorporated really well. All right, so as you can see, we're starting to get just a little bit of bubbling around here, and I did go ahead and put my spatula um, holder right there for it. But I'm gonna be checking the temperature you can start seeing some of the bubbles starting to come to the surface. And again, we're looking for 248 degrees. So I'm gonna place that in here. Now you don't want this to touch the bottom of the pan. You just want it to be inside of the sugar mixture. And we're gonna watch that thermometer and make sure that we pull it at just the right temperature. And you can see on mine, that they are marked at the 250 degree mark with hard ball stage. But what we're looking for is a firm ball. 
and one day maybe we'll do a video on showing how to check all that uh, for doing candy and making all that, but we'll have to see. Give it a little stir here. All right, we're just about there. We're at almost at 225. Let me shift the spot a little bit, make sure we don't have any hot spots. at 225 you can see it going higher can I just tell you how delicious this smells right now I've got that popcorn warming in the oven see it's getting nice and foamy Thirty, and we're just waiting for it to hit two forty five. You can see it almost at softball stage, according to my thermometer right there. Tell you it's getting hotter to keep my hand in here. It's really foaming up. You can see it's almost coming up the top of the pan here. All right, we are just about there. So let me go ahead and pull this thermometer out. And we are about to do some really cool science here. And we are going to be adding in our baking soda, which is a half a teaspoon of baking soda. And we are going to just be sprinkling this over our sugar. Now this is kind of like how you make peanut brittle, if you've ever made homemade peanut brittle. You can see those white streaks coming in. The whole color is changing. It's a nice, beautiful caramel. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and get the popcorn out of the oven and we're going to just drizzle this on top. And I'm gonna fold it into the popped corn. Be right back. Okay, so I got this tray all ready you can see i've got it on there and we're simply going to place it back into our oven and it's going to cook for 45 minutes okay so i'm going to pop this one in pull the other tray out go get that one all nice and covered and i can tell you this is not a very clean um, dish to try to make the popcorn does try to go everywhere so make sure that you do have a nice big surface and all you have to do, like I said, is just pour that sauce right over and fold it all up together and I'll be right back with you. All right, so pan number two is ready to get popped into the oven. And here we go. All right, guys, so I'm gonna set the timer now for 45 minutes. All 
right, so it's set to 45 minutes. And the next thing we're gonna need to do is mix it from the bottom every 15 minutes and really get it mixed up well, okay? After that, it's time to start separating it out and let it cool to enjoy. So we'll be right back with you. This is also a great time if you wanna give it a little taste once the caramel is kind of cooled a little bit. You can see if you need to add any more salt to it or not. I think it tastes fine just like it is, um, but that's a personal preference. So we'll be back, bye. All right guys, so this is the completed product right here. And all you have to do is take a nice little spatula here and start to break it up before it gets all dried. You can see it starts to clump a little bit together and you can break it up as much as you want or as little as you want, okay? So let's give it a little try here. Now you do wanna wait till it cools just a little bit before you take a bite because it will be very hot, but here we go. Enjoy, guys. Thanks so much. See you next time.